गुड आफ्टरनून सर मैं ऑडियो अरविंद भाई नमस्ते कैम छो सर आर यू यू आर ऑन टू अनम्यूट योरसेल्फ यस ओके गुड इवनिंग सर गुड इवनिंग या दिस इज हीरल जोशी फ्रॉम कच्छ गुजरात वाओ गुड टू सी यू ऑल गाइस आई वाज इन कच्छ जस्ट लास्ट वीक Yes. Am I visible? Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, you are visible, sir. Okay, okay, okay. The back is a tapestry, or? Oh no, this is uh, that's uh, I can explain quickly. Uh, that's a Nilkan, uh, that's a Nilkan uh, pick from the Badina. So it's a mosaic tiles by artist or something, sir. And that's a that's a work by painting by the so Virat Sir from Baroda, very good artist, very senior artist. This is some uh, from Bhairavi Modi. So that that he says the important one Gujarati. So Gujarati is written this. So I I can see that. I think English paper is like a down now. So just saying that uh, the promote to or have a value for your own language because it is says it's own beauty and yeah. yeah. The beautiful again work by black and white work with the peacock in the Brazil tree by an artist. There's one more behind is I, I mean I have lots of uh, artist friends and they keep on blackmailing me that no uh, they put the painting and I, that's how I kept buying it. And my wife my wife always says enough enough is at home. <laughs> Everything is, uh, is at my office now. <laughs> Right, inflation of art. <laughs> right. Okay. Yes. Yes, sir. Okay. So we'll starting in some minutes till everybody can join. Okay. Right. So if if we have to. Share the things I'm okay. Okay, I guess because I'm using for a first time. This we will meet. Okay. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. You have all staff at the office or partly working from home? Oh, uh, now we already started. Almost everybody has come, but no, like. Uh, Yeah, uh, some uh, people become uh, like family mem uh, member <laughs> or a corona warrior, and then they stop. So there was a girl. Yeah. They see, they found their mother-in-law had a positive. So oh my God! Mm -hmm. Now, before that, there was a girl. Her mother got corona. So oh, like, see, like both of them have come negative. So it's fine. Oh, good, good, good. <laughs> But somebody was telling me that in September it is going to be even more higher, and that will be happening. It comes. Oh, the nas national figure is showing so that it yeah. almost uh, is frightening. Yes, very. But frightening. because now there is no system that uh, would take care, and now there is no identifiable source, anybody and everybody. As I was saying, it's true that last uh, two weeks, every case that you know is somebody that you know very closely. Kind earlier it was a number, then it was name, and now it is just somebody who is even Matthew kind. Yes, yes. So, <laughs> it's like now. Yeah. Anything, yeah. anytime, anywhere. <laughs> Good evening, Vasu sir. Vasu sir has also joined. Oh, 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 boy. Hame bolye kna bolye. Permission. Yes, sir. 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 Oh. Sir, I think uh, we should start. As so far, many people have joined. Right. Well, so bad idea. Have you any Raju? Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> la la la. Bajao, bajao, bajao. Say it. Today, Tamil. Today, I am not going to say it. 
Yes, yes, sir. I'll go with the just introduction. So, uh, welcome everyone. Thank you for taking time out and joining us for today's talk series. Uh, my name is Siddharth Prashad. I'm a fifth year student at Anand National University. Just a little information before we get started. If you have any questions during the presentation, please type them into the chat box and also a Google uh, Meet control panel. So I'll bring them up during the presentation and we will also have time for questions at the end. So also, if you want to view on demand, this series will be recorded and will be reverted back via mail. So, so right away, today is the fifth of the series being presented by uh, architect Hiren Patel and architect Yatin Pandya sir. This aims, this session aims towards human and sustainable habitats, uh, broad issue type, open spaces, uh, building bylaws, concerns for interactivity and sustainability. So we as a human are aspect of nature. Our sustenance depends on harmonizing the microcosm with cosmos. So present context of COVID and FM has aptly uh, made us aware of this reality and also uh, humbled by this experience. So as an architect, how do we create our habitat which is uh, humane and sustainable? Also, the current dialogue is to probe varied approaches and uh, design directions to for creating architecture to inhabit in harmony with nature. We would be honored to have you share your thoughts and gain knowledge, sir. So, uh, yes, with this, I would like to introduce our first presenter, architect Hiran Patel, sir. Hiran Patel is an architect, interior and landscape designer, uh, known for his innovative designs that are in harmony with man, nature and materials. He has gone through several ups and downs in his 27 years of experience in this industry, but he uh, still uh, wakes up every morning determining to take any challenge ahead. Uh, on And his philosophy include minim minimalism, exclusivity and sustainability that are the aesthetics of architecture. His eagerness to learn effects in this persona as he takes pride in embracing change as the only cons constant in his life. Uh, Hiren sir is also a vivid painter and uh, makes big watercolor paintings inspired from landscape. Is a teacher, mentor, and friend, and confident to everyone who crosses path with him. So, uh, with this, I would like to hand over uh, the charge to you, sir. Okay. Yeah. So, good afternoon, everyone, uh, and thank you for inviting uh, for uh, this kind of meet because no, nowadays we don't meet people and. Uh, this is a new platform to meet, chat with the people and uh, also it's a learning. So, um, yes, uh, I mean, we all have experienced uh, the COVID and uh, lockdown and you know, actually uh, in a way also sometimes it's become like a little blessing uh, that you actually came to know about the value of home basically. You know? Because you realize how important a home is. I mean, and how important our family is. And then uh, staying, let's say, in one room for a month. I mean, it was not like people go for uh, self uh, uh, learning so about knowing about your own, uh, who are uh, your own soul. People go for, uh, let's say, Vipassana or some kind of uh, Samadhi or you no know, kind of thing. This has automatically happened to everyone that we were absolutely with our own and with your within uh, limited sources, and then you can. Um, uh, be be with you. I mean, it was a wonderful time. And then, no, from your window or let's say or um, veranda or your balcony, you could see outside nature because there was hardly any kind of traffic movement. So suddenly, you you notice that nothing was uh, disturbing you in terms of uh, visual things, and you were actually looking in surrounding, which was basically a nature. Either it was a uh, light falling on the building or street or uh, there are trees, the leaves are coming, growing and falling down or maybe you start noticing there are uh, beautiful flowers are coming, whatever the kind of size of plants or the trees around you and actually you could actually notice that okay, next to my house I have a, let's say champa tree or let's say spathoria tree you, you realize that the, the, the flower will stay almost uh, five days or three days and it will fall down it has a life for one more day and then if it becomes brown, there are certain kind of flowers, they still uh, stay on the branches of the tree. 
and they become brown, but even the brown or dye flower also looks so beautiful. So there were so many things actually we have never noticed, which we could see that. So that's where uh, the COVID has taught us to be uh, good to be with nature, uh, good to be with family, and good, uh, we, uh, we came to know the importance of a house. I mean, because you live at home. So primarily, basically, we as a designers uh, live in two, I mean, we all people live in two major uh, uh, spaces, which is one is uh, like uh, living your home. And second one is uh, your workplace. So these are the two areas where you spend the most. Uh, and uh, apart from that, you have lots of buildings like let's say museum, theaters, cafe, restaurant. Those are the ones which you go for a while and come back. But these are the two areas which you spend a lot. For a student, instead of the office, you would spend time at your college or school. So these are the like primary important architecture spaces. And if you think that if you design them with the nature, how beautiful it could be. So I have a very few random pictures that maybe I can share with you guys about some projects we have worked and kind of little learning we have out of that. So I will just quickly say that maybe I can do that. Okay. So yeah. Uh, how do I do my... Okay. So it is on the right bottom, present now. Okay. So are you able to see? Uh, okay, it's loading. Yes, yes, yes. It is with me. Yeah. Yeah, so, uh, okay. So are you able to see the PowerPoint presentation? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We can. Yeah, it's the it's the first uh, slide which was uh, our talk. Okay. Okay. So uh, this is the one office we did uh, in Surat, and uh, it was uh, like a thinking that uh, how one can design a workplace which is right in the, you are working in the garden. It's completely in the garden. So there was like two kind of thinking came when we had to design this uh, small office in a big plot. Uh, so, we, I mean, it was a four cubicle, you can see is uh, on the right, left, uh, front and the back. So there are four glass cubicles uh, where you have the two like meeting rooms uh, or office spaces. One is a staff working area and one is a conference room on the left side. So we thought okay, how we design something you virtually live in a garden and you work. I mean, uh, if you are in garden, definitely you think very differently, you see the nature. So that's how the idea came. And then second idea was that that at our home, we have balcony, we have verandas. But in offices, you don't have such kind of spaces, semi-covered area, what we call as a, in our uh, uh, study or our architecture language. So we thought, why can't we also create the veranda space or the semi-covered space for the office as well? So this is what we thought of uh, creating. So you can see there are scattered uh, glass cubes and then they are connected with the thin roof of concrete, uh, the kind of uh, the roof on the top uh, with uh, connecting in between spaces and use. That is how you get the semi open veranda kind of space that also are used for the walking. So that's that's uh, that's the office. I mean, so you can see the, the virtually you are living into the uh, green and uh, when you are walking, you see the garden all over the uh, all over the time. and. Uh, Basically, uh, uh, what happens is once you are in the office, uh, I mean, constantly every every minute as the sun keeps on moving, the light play and the shadow is constant like a it's a constant magic of light is happening, and uh, it's so refreshing that you no, know, uh, in morning this office would look different, and afternoon it will look different, and in the late evening it will look different, and uh, uh, absolutely like you have the kind of. Uh, connection with the nature. Yes, sometimes the sun is very harsh. We do have the curtain inside so you can drag down to control it, but uh, most of the time it's, it could remain open. Uh, also, we have plant, uh, planted in a such a way that uh, on the western side and southern side, we are planting a tall tree, so it, eventually it will cast the shadow and it will cover the glass with that. So you can protect your west and south uh, glass where north and east can be, you can keep it open because you 
on the north you don't get direct uh, kind of uh, sun so and then uh, as a each year palette we thought we we wanted to uh, like uh, uh, have lift kind of uh, Oh, obvious kind of uh, filling. So you see, the columns are all white painted with a white ceiling, and the flooring is black IPS flooring, seamless flooring. So there's nothing to highlight that. So actually, your attention goes towards the garden. And and uh, what happened that uh, uh, what happened that uh, by doing this, we we started. I know it's always good to see whatever you design. Always go back and try to understand. So that will teach you that some mistake you have done, you can improve for the next time. And something, let's say, unconsciously you have discovered something new, you will come to know about it. And then you can adopt that thing also on your next projects. So what happened? The people come to this place here. They say everybody loves this office so much that people come for a meeting for 10, 15 minutes, but they end up staying one hour more. And sometimes they sit. Only in Varanasi, even they don't walk inside the uh, spaces because uh, they feel so comfortable uh, if, if the weather permits them. So that's what we realized that uh, uh, bringing a nature in workspace makes you so happy, very comfortable, and you become more creative and you become very calm. And even that, even the loss of pressure of the work, uh, visitors also come; they also feel like sitting and stay long with you. So that that was a new kind of. Learning happened. You can see this cow kind of form was the idea that we really wanted to uh, not impact the architecture, and we wanted to have the seamless quality connecting the nature. So we thought, let's create the form which is which least uh, is uh, hurts your eyes as less as possible. So that's how the free flowing uh, roof came. That was an idea. That's a kind of uh, thinking uh, process, I would say. Uh, yeah. So that 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 was the office which was like a, uh, like that. Said so like this is a house, and uh, uh, what we thought that uh, luckily we had two. You can see on the left top and right top there are two neem trees. So we had those two neem trees, and then we thought okay, let's kind kind of uh, create kind of avenue to enter to the house, and let's create really celebration of a garden's uh, house kind of feeling. So. You enter through the beautiful garden. So we uh, created the kind of mount uh, and created a long path to entering, and then we had this uh, dead palms and the ficus and a lot more kind of different variety of plants to uh, create the avenue. Uh, you are passing through the you no know, kind of khajuri uh, wadi uh, how you kind of feel that kind of you are you are passing by dead palm trees and it's a kind of uh, a sense of arrival happen to the house. So idea is again how how best you connect. Even house to the nature, so this is that uh, one former living space, and uh, we thought it would be good idea to have the completely glass all around, and that's so you're uh, virtually sitting in the the open pavilion kind of space, and the height of the space is much higher, so you literally feel that the roof is tall, and then you have more visual connection to, towards the garden. What we did in the left side, we created the compound wall uh, uh, plinth uh, around seven feet. And we fill up the soil, and then we planted the trees. So what happened that uh, the trees started growing from seven feet height, so they uh, they become more taller, and you, we started we actually got the kind of privacy from the neighboring uh, areas because we wanted to have privacy from the next door houses. So that's how. And uh, on the left side is the north, and the front side is the uh, east. So we have the lawn because we are, you get the sun in the morning, and then the sun doesn't hit. But if you can see rightly on the right hand side, which is uh, which is the south side. We have densely planted the plantation, thinking that they will cut down the direct sun onto the glass, and that's how we can control or uh, kind of uh, save the heat gain inside the uh, the room. So these are like experiment. I mean, we haven't checked in terms of the temp temperature and laboratory check, but it does work. It's a more of a kind of thinking pattern is happening. Uh, so that's how I, uh, you can see the drastic. The, the north side left is completely open. Where the right, right side is a glass, but it's completely covered with a dense plantation. So that that's uh, the kind of house uh, uh, we have, and the, the same house where uh, uh, you are walking through the kind of nice bridge. And the left side was that formal living space, and right side is the main house where you have the family dining uh, bedroom above and kitchen and everything. And you can see extremely on the. Right side also it's a glass and you can see the kitchen island from there. So from the kitchen also you have fantastic view. So we call this house like a garden house 
where from every corner, every bathroom to every kitchen to bed, everywhere you are connected to outside garden and at the same time you also have the privacy. So that's how it is. For example, you can see on the left side the huge uh, TARDIS pump. So basically behind that is the puja room. So what we thought, like we thought of miniature painting of uh, puja, uh, the Sinanji uh, temple and now we see nice uh, Pichwai where you have lots of banana trees uh, which, uh, which are very spiritual and people would plant next to the uh, spiritual places at the temple. We, we, we replicate that with the uh, using the tireless palm basically. So it's a, it, it was like a playing with the garden uh, with architecture form. I mean, this is just to give an idea from uh, dining how it, it, it looks outside. Uh, that's the uh, uh, kitchen which is very beautiful and it's an island and you can see completely outside <clears throat> the view of the garden. Uh, this is uh, another house uh, which uh, like uh, uh, if you are on the south side, uh, if you are on the west side and uh, uh, if the direct sun comes, what, what you do? Maybe not. So we say this, uh, we have completely blank wall towards the west side because we really wanted to protect the kind of uh, direct uh, light coming inside there. So that's how we have the blank wall actually uh, with uh, some bathroom space over there. So it gives buffer to inside. And then uh, when you have the harsh kind of architecture, it is a good idea to com combine with the landscaping thoughts right from the beginning. So you, you can see that we have, uh, for the first day sketch, we really wanted to plant uh, the outside, uh, the compound wall uh, kind of plantation, which will become like a thick uh, green patch versus the stone patch. And uh, so there are like a surfaces of green and stone and the metal and kind of thing. And again, you see on the right hand side, there are, uh, there are uh, mm, the champa tree. So it, it gives it kind of good blend with uh, green versus hard hard architecture, hard scape, I would say. Yeah, it's the same house, which is actually a triangle plot actually. So you can see what we did from the west side, it was solid, but on the east side, entire house opened up. So you can see from the living space, you have the garden private view. From the upper bedroom, you also have a terrace and you have the view. And then on the left side, we completely densely plant. No, these are all freshly newly plant, uh, planted things. I mean, you can just see it's a hardly less than a five years old house. But look at on the right side, the terminalia has gone so high, it's, it has gone higher than our architecture. On the left side also, terminal tree has also gone more than the sloping roof now. Uh, the dead palms are looking so beautiful, they have gone across the first floor. And there are conocopus which, uh, which are known for growing very fast. So they are, what we do is conocopus is a kind of tree, also they are beautiful tree. I have been using since almost 15 years. And we, people say that it's a good tree or not. It's a, there's a kind of debate of using that tree. But what we do, we, we try to do, uh, we mix that. If we uh, plant this uh, fast growing tree next to the slow growing tree. So by the time there's a slow growing tree, become mature after 10 years, you can cultivate this more fast growing one. So that's how you can harvest the wood. And uh, you at the same time, in the beginning the time where the slow so growing trees uh, doesn't give you privacy, for example, the fast growing tree can help you also. It's a good idea to have, I mean, observe it because you know, landscaping is such, you have to really, nobody can actually teach you. I mean, you have to really learn from your own mistake and you will constantly keep on watching what, what is the impact of that. Because you no, know, I mean, uh, uh, we, I mean, particularly I'm not a trained uh, landscape designer, so it's uh, always kind of, it's like a club where you, you, uh, you, you need to constantly work upon and uh, see that uh, what results comes. So uh, from the private house, I just came to the one, uh, one project, which is a uh, high-rise apartment. So what you do, especially in a high-rise apartment, when especially uh, 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 people live in the compact spaces, it, is, it would be a good idea to create a, lots of uh, open space at ground and creating a multiple kind of uh, green uh, spaces where a cluster of the people can come and use it. So this is like a very private uh, uh, swimming pool for them. And we have on the right side, thick plantation uh, to give the protection for the, uh, the next door uh, apartment. But uh, still the ladies can also do the swimming and they have their own privacy kind of thing. And on the deck, again, you can go on up and there is kind of a terrace garden to sit. And this is like uh, uh, around the all, uh, the blocks, there are five blocks of apartment. What we connected is the, them from outside ring where the car would move, but inner ring is all pedestrian. 
and then we have a nice beautiful kind of veranda spaces where people come down see talk and now it's like a kind of it gives a kind of resort feeling and there are connecting paths which is uh, connected with the semi covered the uh, tensile roof of fabric so people uh, we see that people uh, in the morning people comes down and doing morning walk and kind of so it's like a really happening space so i mean we really had I, i'm sure yatin bhai you knows much more than me and uh, uh, about the wisdom of our traditional architecture pole houses and kind of the common facilities we had so this is the vertical living but how can you bring that essence of co- community spaces at ground where people will com- come down meet each other and it's like a healing that if you talk to somebody else you relieve no because in today's urban life we have lots of stresses lots of things are there it's good to come down meet your neighbors and talk and no kind of thing so this is like very inviting spaces at ground floor uh, i will go very rough quickly on this so we have also like little social kitchen where people like let's say three family decide to come down and we have the kitchen so they can just uh, cook or the warm up their food and have a dinner or a um, uh, brunch or breakfast in uh, holidays i think this works fantastically because you know, then that's how you socialize with the uh, people so that's how we have this nice beautiful kitchen at the common space we have seen that people are, and after covid i am telling the, that uh, everybody has become like a nowadays chef no i mean everybody so now they they run kind of a, somebody from the because a hundred uh, families staying and every family would have somebody expert so now what they do they teach each other so somebody will say i know how to bake the let's say uh, bake or make a biscuits uh, the lady would come down say they will have social media network and they on whatsapp group they say that this sunday i am going to demonstrate how to cook the uh, uh, let's say uh, brown bread and then they come down there the kind of class he would teach and that's how people learn so it's such a wonderful thing when we had designed our clients our the builders were really skeptical uh, so they were not sure about uh, how the um, this space will be used but now after covid i mean it is it is been so popular that people love coming down and doing their skill of cooking and that's wonderful so that's like these are like little walking areas uh, across the place and we brought some nice artifacts from the the dangadra which is nearby place uh, where they are they have wonderful stone and craftsmanship so if you can use the artisans work little bit try to do that that's how we can <clears throat> keep them busy and no i mean uh, they have their own pride because they are so good at and nowadays slowly we are losing them so it is uh, our moral duty to uh, find some kind of uh, work for them so they have work at their home town and uh, they have earning so that's uh, that's that kind of thinking would also be required so if you are architect start cultivating that and uh, also at the same time i mean uh, uh, promote the good uh, good artwork and uh, contemporary art work i mean we have beautiful uh, lily pond uh, over here with the fountains and we have the wonderful art work by the uh, artist called apurva desai uh, and he has be- made beautiful like he, we say we want happy family characters so that's how we brought some fathers and the daughters uh, face uh, with metal strip and it's, it's really beautiful it's a, so with the traditional craftsmanship also we promote kind of art work that's the south the, the end is so inviting when you come back your home you are walking through the small corridors if you see the very simple structure not really expensive so only a kind of gesture one has to put on to create the beautiful living spaces so that's all i would uh, uh, say for this uh, and uh, any any questions anybody has uh, can ask now or later whenever is possible thank you so much we can just go through the session uh, next presentation then we will take up the question yeah. answers okay. okay thank you thank you sir for sharing your thoughts it was very much interesting and informative okay moving forward to our next presenter architect yatin pandya sir yatin pandya an author academician researcher as well as the practicing architect with his firm footprint arts He is graduate from Sept University, Ahmedabad, and has earned Master of Architecture degree from McGill University, Montreal. Yatin sir has won over 38 national and international award for architectural designs and research and dissemination, including the United Nations Habitat Award, Special Mention, and United States Curry Stone Foundation Design Prize for Sustainable Practice. He has written over 300 arki- uh, articles in national and international journals, several books, 
authored by him especially concept of space in traditional indian architecture and element of space making so have been published internationally he has also been involved in preparing over 30 video documentaries on architecture he has been visiting faculty at nid and sept university and guest lecture to various universities in india and as well as in abroad so, yes sir over to you sir thank you thank you honor to be here and good to see hiran bhai's recent projects uh, what i'm going to do is to take few steps backward only to set the premise so since you've seen the designs being applied i'm going to only run through the principles that as a student as an architect that we can uh, think about and take informed design decisions uh, so uh, what kind of decisions become of a priority area when we talk about housing and especially mass housing where the end user is anonymous uh, so as hiran bhai mentioned that uh, the anchors or activity generators that bring the people together and it forms a community because uh, housing that way has uh, many obligations or it is one of the very critical dimensions uh, of uh, even urban structure like any places character if you see land use more than 2/3 or even 70% or more is housing anywhere europe if it was not for the you know streets and housing it is not just those fill tower and monument that uh, characterizes those places so it is one that gives city its own character it is somewhere where you live so the quality of life is uh, very highly affected there dharti no chedo ghar wali baat se you know even if you might be in a seven star hotel but when you come back what is it that makes home feel like ke apno che so that's where socio cultural aspects are one of the critical ones and also being multiplied even if you make a small little difference in terms of your concern for environment for uh, you know sustainability it multiplies in a singular place or in an institute it is only limited to that but if in mass housing because of its multiplying factor small error can multiply also and small little uh, you know difference positively made can also multiply considerably so with this kind of uh, pretext uh, let me run through some of the uh principles and the kind of design uh, you have not presented your screen so sorry you have not presented your screen ha ha i'm just uh, now putting it on uh, yeah it is visible okay. all right so uh, i'm mean, keeping in the premise of the architect or designer we mass the houses architecture to essentially house the masses and the goal is to have humane sustainable and equitable habitat uh, as uh, hiran bhai also mentioned and we all have experienced uh, that pandemics often it can the constraint can be turned into a virtue it has taught us many things it has taught us humanity equality humility frugality and sustainability we have learned that uh, we were uh, trying to overpower nature but basically we understood that we are a microcosm to the cosmos till we coexisted we are okay but when we try to overpower we need to kind of uh, think about uh, our place uh, and we are not the only one you know there was always this uh, assumption that we are probably populated so much we have grown overgrown for the capabilities of this planet but uh, same number of people but undue systems being kind of eliminated from the uh, overall functioning we saw that nature corrected its own course and water like delhi pollution nobody knew how to take care of it and it did it by itself so Uh, whether it was air quality water quality nature blooming as well as even uh, animals occupying the space which we had pushed them into bring sort and what not so the point is that how do we at this point pause and ponder and take these lessons further so as 
to kind of uh, deserve the corrected planet in which we now live. And this is not to frighten us, but it's only to pause and say that how simple it was to do things. Hiran Bhai was mentioning as well that uh, home, we were in four months within the place, except for you not being able to meet girlfriend physically and hug. It was not feeling like a jail. It was uh, quite a wonderful, in fact, in some ways, except for the work part and the economic part, you miss that. Uh, and the whole world could be at certain still. And thanks to the changing nature, nature inherently changes every day, morning to evening. Nature meaning sun, nature meaning vegetation, nature meaning people and activity, nature meaning light and uh, you know its variations and so on and so forth. So the whole thing was that, and we could learn that look diversity of space is useful thing morning we could be here afternoon we could be here we could be with family and uh, you know being with fellow human being so basically that existence has two fundamental pillars one is human to human bond and uh, kind of a co existence and the other one is human to nature so with that if we now look back at the kind of a race we were having to so-called create smart modern city we need to question was this an idea of growth simply or was it the notion or a vision for the progress or the kind of uh, you know future uh, world uh, we both of these are what contemporarily exist but the right one is what we have recently created in past couple of decades while the other ones for century and millennia they were homes, they created community, and community created living environment. That's one of the important role when we talk about house or housing, where uh, it is, see, it's not a neutral place like institute or uh, somebody's work area, where you join or connect with heart and your aspirations and reveries also have to be part of this included. So home, creates neighborhood, neighborhoods create community, communities create society, and societies create notion or nation. So uh, that's how uh, the obligation is. And this we could see in some of the earlier uh, naturally created housing. And now is it becoming a crowd of or dwelling unit density numbers or what? Inequality, you know, Ahmadmi to Ambani, and uh, the huge deficit, etc. Urban areas becoming, uh, you know, sprawling into suburb and suburbing urbanizing, uh, affordable housing, the huge need, uh, etc. So, what do we need? We need to understand our development model from these, and especially it comes to habitat design, imageability, livability, plurality, equity, interactivity, and sustainability. And therefore, holistic habitat, any development has to go through these five filters. Timeless aesthetic, because building arguably is going to be lasting longer than us. Sociocultural appropriateness, because this is where people's ways of life, aspirations, and culture is connected. Resource management through environmental sustainability, because they're frugal resources and they're quite too many. Economic affordability, without that, it won't be viable. And of course, structural strength, because it has to last beyond. Now, if you look at the ways uh, that uh, architecture of the place, that is, we call vernacular, and that when multiplied over a period of time, it becomes traditional. It is of the place, for the place, by the place. So if we so see these pictures, we can very conveniently guess the climate base, the cultural ethos, as well as material, etc. But when we look at this, we have problem. And even if I put the name, we will very innocently accept it. It could have been a bluff. Uh, both of these are Kerala. We need to pause and decide which Kerala makes sense, which Jaipur is for us, and which Kolkata we need to promote. Uh, so where often, you know, we don't like to look at our backyard or we don't want to hear what grandma is saying, but we pay fortune to pay American consultant or Maharaj and Maharaj ke beta ja, uh, you know, yehi kar tu jo tere baap ne bola tha, you know. And then we do everything. So Singapore, Singapore was a small fisherman's village, almost uh, got independence around our uh, nation's time. 
and uh, it had nothing and suddenly for its virginity it attracted a lot of tourism and people started using it like earlier bombay to khandala and likewise for conventions for exhibitions and what not and suddenly it got its riches but it invested its riches into such concrete megaliths and they found that somewhere in 97 after becoming rich it actually had lost its tourism and being a kind of autocratic uh, you know country's uh, governance they ran an analysis and they figured that actually it had lost its identity asmita the uniqueness uh, and they overnight issued strictures that i think uh, singapore we belong to this 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 is our character and ethos and that's how they changed their publicity pitch also to melting uh, you know pot of various cultures from then on to highlighting their waterfronts restoring their chinatowns and also their cultural kind of uh, elements etc so the point is therefore we need to understand in india who or what is the ethos with which we stand so we have to know the difference between history and tradition pranali and itihas history is a dead tradition while tradition is a living history the very fact that it survives today is a proof of those values even being shared today otherwise it would have been obsolete uh, and therefore we see moorings of three or moorings of past and aspiration of tomorrow coexist to create reality of today so there's an overlap of three time uh, the other aspect is pluralism that is manifested by as many people as many gods in the faith system or belief system in the sari as an idea through attire that same six yard sari can be worn differently and look differently idea of the food thali as an idea of a combination meal where you are the designer of your bite and every bite is a unique combination even though ingredients are same to all first bite doesn't have to taste same as the next doesn't have to taste same as the last as against pizza also my favorite dish but once cooked all bites taste the same and you eat the same food as i do we can share the experience here everybody has a unique experience because their sequence would be different the combination would be different and the proportion would be different and still within that structure each region even in gujarat surat is different from amdavad and kathiawad obviously different from there and kutch even further different so within that same structure same in architecture that you can identify each one's uh, unique identity but together it creates a cohesive street like jaipur it is even commerce institution and housing on the same kind of a facade uh, existence through notion and this is important that you know like for example the way it gets personified very effectively is that uh, in a public corridor in a dark corner always it becomes a jahir shaujalay or it's a kind of a pan uh, pichkari point uh, and warning signs don't really work usually they get most uh, spitted upon but the moment you put god's icons uh, idols there it suddenly changes the meaning because notionally now it has become a temple physically it is still a dark corner you know so this is the effectivity of that and if we understand that and look at how locally things had evolved that doesn't mean you don't bring your or that doesn't mean turning the clock backward we'll talk about it but if you pick from there we have not to invent alphabet from a we can start from p q r and take it further or even go beyond the z that we already know so here there was a study done in japan that uh, you know instead of formal ties tuxedo for the executives if they were allowed to have casual dressing they would feel the same level of comfort with couple of degree warmer ac temperature so wrong dressing was the culprit for unduly having to jack up the uh, ac and burn your electricity so if mr mohanlal or people from coastal region if they are in their mound at their bare chested are they primitive or they are salman khans of their respective places so we knew gandhi who, who knew when to wrap and unwrap yet uh, you know a dignified way and uh, respect the modesty do we need that or we need uh, gandhi to also to a line that this is now the spring collection and this is winter collection we need to know when we are aping and when we are adapting because that's where the norms become very important so it is the question of which norm we follow 
and that's where you can do half of the thing. So first point in housing, we take certain design decisions, like six to be precise, uh, build form, the building type, that is unbuilt space, which culturally and climatically as much and more important. Uh, third being the amenities here and by talked about. Uh, fourth uh, being the access system, pedestrian and vehicle. Fifth being the infrastructure, and uh, sixth being the kind of land use or, or, or the mix of uh, economic activity or cross subsidy or economics, or stuff like that. So I just want to focus on this low rise versus high rise. That uh, yes, the high rise, if you go beyond certain density, you the whole thing came about with Corbusier's kind of this uh, worry that, uh, as I said, that suburbs were urbanizing and uh, we were sprawling and a lot of land was being taken away. So in a small footprint, uh, you could uh, build the thing up and you could leave a lot of it uh, open. But with the same kind of idea, if we build like this, we have to wonder, have we even left the open space and still we have continued on top. But what are the implications? It's not having it or not having it, but it is to see when it is a compulsion versus still what point it is your choice to go high rise. It need not be a compulsion. We are not talking about low density. We are still talking about high density. But even with high density, an idea of having a good open space. So typically, if we use the thumb rule, if at least 40% of the land is open, uh, it is, I think, a good plan with 60% as a sellable. Uh, you know, I mean, uh, like Godrej uh, Shantigram or whatever. Uh, or Adani Shantigram, sorry, 80% open, but for a golf course, it doesn't mean anything. Amenities have to be good for all, uh, uh, you know, like some of those that we saw in uh, here in Vice presentation. So for what are we using open space and at what cost? That is where we have to always arrive at the right balance. So, but what are the inherent implications now through design, how we can overcome that? That's why I'm raising the kind of... Uh, implication which is inherent to a type first is strained interaction you know you might know opposite building far away and if you use binocular even farther away so you might know a lot about uh, but somebody exactly four and a half inch above you six inches above you in a slab above he's more likely to be your notional enemy because his toilet is leaking on yours his kids are jumping and you get heart attack earthquake and he works at a late night and you don't get a sleep so he's more like and you know nothing about him he's a faceless ghost just four and a half or six inch above you but uh, in a street 20 houses apart you still know about everything so that is a, you know, by virtue of being in the same icon, that creates a sense of indifference. Uh, that indifference that has been studied on has created increased crime rate, you know, where their visual monitoring, the usual, you know, uh, kind of... Uh, uh, habit of panchat niche jata chata upar dokya karta hai to betron mar sudhi to kona ghar ma su chale che badi khabar padi jaye you know but uh, in a taller one you don't even care you think you know people sharing the even elevator you are concerned about it you ask anything uh, even if there was a murderer or a, you know some kind of a nuisance uh, element there thief you would have no right to ask question you know and for that, unduly, you have to have other sets of systems when it affects the neighborhood quality itself. Uh, then, uh, you know, tool user group. So there was a study done in uh, New York uh, with uh, Christopher Alexander, and he has uh, those pattern languages of which one pattern is four-story limit. Uh, so there he found that the same building, but the third floor crime rate was significantly lower compared to the same building, their block, and the kind of people and neighborhood, the 13th uh, floor. So it was purely the floor to be attributed for that. And we also know from uh, Louis Pritt example, uh, where, uh, you know, very modern building, but because of the kind of crime rate, etc., it was attributed to the building. And the solution was to demolish that modern kind of building and do it in a different way. 
Two user groups get adversely affected, the elderly and the toddlers, because they can't keep going up and down for their routine. Uh, and like toddler, you won't put five uh, story old, five year old toddler onto ground and say from eighth floor, ki beta niche ram pasi utane, uh, bola uchu, you know. And elderly also can't keep going up and down, and therefore their confined kind of living is not necessarily that great for a neighborhood quality. And even it is going to be expensive. Uh, you know, uh, like often the argument given is that, OK, land is very expensive, so you would get tall. But you have to also understand it's a chicken and the egg. Uh, it's a catch 20. That if land becomes expensive, uh, if you allow to go higher up, you know you can get more yield. And therefore, you don't mind paying even more for the land. So it's a kind of a, a catch 20. But structurally, because of the earthquake, every floor that you add, you're adding 10 percent, uh, you know, uh, reinforcement and whatnot, uh, which your structural engineer will tell you. All services are anti-gravity, so mechanized services, uh, and you have to maintain. Like uh, you know that there are always fights in high-rise about uh, uh, people living to one or two floors not in the installment, and guy on the ninth floor has no choice but to put it. Now, the point is, therefore, just to remember that uh, these are the consequences. And if at all you choose to do this, what are the design kind of uh, uh, you know alternatives or design kind of obligations with which you overcome that? This is just to say, of course, one FSI is only uh, relevant to certain contexts. But I was just saying that our four houses, actually, it has 2.7 FSI on a plot. So it is much higher, one and a half times than legally allowed 1.8 FSI in 11 story apartments. You know, So uh, it is just how you slice. Of course, the simulation for one, we will see higher density simulation as well. But it's the same cake, same kg, same uh, money. But if you slice vertically, everybody gets the cherry and the crust. But if you slice horizontally, upper, uh, you know, somebody gets the crust. Somebody gets the cherry, and somebody gets the inner uh, middle one. Same way, argument about freeing up the land. If you have one FSI and you build 100%, then you get one FSI. It's no good. Moment you go two story, you've got 50 50 open space and build. Four story, you've got 75% open and 25% build, which is very good. Uh, but if you go 10 story, you have marginally increased from 75 to 90 the open space. But you have added two and a half times that mass, which then has all those severity, including a need for elevator. This is a simulation I should have had another slide for even 2.5 and 4. Only in four story you can get 2.2. And if you add a fifth floor, which is like a penthouse or even half of this, you easily get uh, uh, 2.5 FSI. And uh, most uh, cities, including Mumbai, barring few needles, uh, which has special FSI, uh, they are up within three FSI all across India. You know, So till this threshold, you don't have to go high rise. It can well be your choice as a designer. But if you do choose that, then you know what are your design obligations to humanize the vertical living. You know, Same way about open space here. You see both this diagram, both the rectangle, a uh, square, 50 by or five, 50 by 50 is exactly in area same as the 10 feet ring in a 70 by 70 plot. Okay, both are exactly 50 percent and same. But the 10 feet margin, like that solid block and 10 feet around, is 50 percent open space, but good for nothing. You can't have car move there. You can't plant a tree. You can't have kids play there. You can't have kitty party. Inverse it, uh, like a perimeter block. And you have 50 by 50 open space where everybody can relate to that. It is good for planting at least four to six trees, at least some six or eight cars, or more, in fact, uh, and uh, 50 people uh, gathering or more, 250 people gathering. So uh, that's how it is just a design which can make a difference. So, uh, uh, we know the threshold, we take an informed decision. This is a simulation. For 1.8 FSI, you have to trust me on this. But left and right both have exactly same density. Arguably, the left one creates a street character, the better urban form, 
virtual shadowing, so climate advantage, and everybody getting terrace at every floor, so better neighborhood, uh, you know. Uh, if you uh, just, uh, you know, don't like the traditional, uh, now the God, the Bhagawan had made this, uh, and if you don't see the, you know, if you just see the right hand side top, it looks like a duplet, and in a brochure, it's just if you portion the one below, it feels like so. So, of course, it's a freestanding needle, but at the same time, if you do this, then bungalow in the sky with partial variety, volumetric consideration, outdoor uh, terraces, and vegetation, etc. This one is way back from Singa uh, sorry, Yugoslavia, the communist country, then socialist. And uh, you can see that even if it's a concrete jungle, that 14 to 16 story mass has been broken down into two story duple row houses over that two story duple apartment over that four story walk up apartment and over that four story another walk up apartment so 14 to 16 story but it doesn't become a kind of a isolated needle so it still creates a street form you still get terracing and those terraces become public spaces for upper four floors to come out too so actually you don't have to go down or climb up more than two floors uh, for outdoor activities of collective nature uh, you need the abitation mr kabuzia's whole idea of putting it he demonstrated where he said piloti is going to be a public space and terracing this is one thing uh, you know your generation has to do regardless you can't leave terrace unattended haryan bhai has done some projects where he has put nice gardens on top and uh, you put cross connect etc so uh, this is even in mumbai people creep we don't have open space but i have yet to see great examples in mumbai where even regular apartment terraces on the contrary terraces would be locked and you have to go to you know secretary but away from uh, Rajasthan, you know, we knew king and queen could romance there in privacy. You had a tall parapet with jali-like thing, and there was no question of security, privacy, and yet you could uh, use these spaces, you know. Even in an apartment, you know, the street at upper level, so how could you create community spaces? And this is one of the epitome, in my opinion, where mass production, mass housing, but every house getting more than one terrace and common open spaces. And since I was told that there are more than 80% students, I'm just sharing just a few months ago's semester of a second semester student's design with the density not even, an, I mean, it's high density, not even an issue to discuss. But the way one went about first, visualize what is the quality you need at upper level. And with these kind of explorations, it could do a, kind of a tall building, but and all services taken care of, all structural logic looked after, and you can see different color, is different mix of areas. So it is not also tower A is 3 BHK and tower B is 4 BHK type. Everybody getting terrace and uh, externally, you could access these terraces through another system. So staircases, you can take elevator to go from ground to 11th floor, but from 9th to 11th, you can take a staircase and come into a sort of a next terrace nearby. And three-dimensionally organized amenities. So it's not only uh, the ground, but you could have fourth floor as a kitty party area and sixth floor as a club and eighth floor as a gym and likewise. So you can kind of really integrate. So we need to develop a model for high rise where it's humanized and we have to find atria like spaces which substitutes for horizontal streets vertically you know so this is just a second year student example and not just academic it has the density it has the structure and it has the code and including house form variation even in mass housing how could you mix and match that's why i said thali that uh, create thali architecture where each one can find a unique expression you know then idea of unbuilt spaces here it's right in front of you this small alley on the left is celebrating Bharat or some festivity. It's positive. Law, by law bound, uh, you know, open space as a service uh, street is actually uh, the cause of a deter deterring environment because the failure is in recognizing that it's a window next to a kitchen rather than a door. And everybody throws their muck out of this and therefore it becomes a dirty alley. 
So uh, instead of window, like in the extreme right, if you simply turn into a door, it would be one of the most uh, sought after backyards and without telling anybody, everybody would share half half and it would be one of the maintained and varied uh, spaces and you would find, uh, you know, if it is Kerala, the coconut and if it is somewhere else, the papaya or whatever trees growing there. Uh, in poor houses, it was a blurred interface. House could come out onto the street and street could extend into the house. But again, 15% open space set aside by the bylaw, but no interface with the built. You can see that there is no kind of, a, uh, you know, even the houses, their end have no window and therefore it is uh, unused and eventually abused. Too large an open space also fail to relate to the built mass around and therefore remains idle and therefore uh, eventually enclosed and abused. And it's not the money, it's the mindset. For example, with no money in a slum, a shaded area uh, with a dignified plinth uh, as a multi-purpose space uh, at the junction of movement becomes successful group open space, whereas against the Ballard estate on the right, uh, beautiful colonial buildings, one of the richest uh, real estates and owned by who is who of the corporate world. But you can see the pipe over the window and shows that you have nothing to do at the back and that attitude at the back with the hugely expensive real estate has turned into no man's uh, land. So interactive interface, you know, I can't uh, imagine Pompidou Center being designed by Corbusian vocabulary with a stern concrete. Uh, I think this joker-like character inside out has spontaneously given people a liberty to take charge and therefore this plaza has become a very active public space uh, of the city. Same way Bern and Switzerland, that, that no wonder they generate uh, the chess masters. Even this art form, Anish Kapoor's Jelly Bean in Chicago, where you dared not go after six o'clock. It was a dormitory, I mean, busy city, nine to six, but then people left for suburbs, dormitory towns, and then uh, city was idle and socially a uh, little challenged. Uh, but uh, with this and Millennium Park, it suddenly started becoming something. Sense of belonging is very important in housing. It's like my home, not A upon three by two, you know. So uh, that's what traditional housing recognize. You can see every house has identity, personality. You know, you can say, you know, you can say, you know, you had a character to describe rather than number. Same way street, uh, you know, we say street as a public space. And this is something I would like to drive that, you know, on a street, somebody's private car, doesn't matter it's Maruti or a Mercedes, occupying two and a half meter by four and a half meter. And we don't question just because he pays 15 rupees. Many times it's free. But if there is a hawker there, we say it's an encroachment. And typically, every time by bribing Havaldar, the encroacher comes back because he is serving you what you want at that place, at that price, at that time. And that guy is an encroacher. And somebody's private car parked there, you are happy that street section to huge huge. You know? So why can't we just simply design from the beginning accounting for not only hawkers, but for elderly to come out and sit. So benches, you know, in your street section, leave aside a zone for pedestrian, as well as for exhibits, for mobile chargers to these days, for shauchalas, for, uh, you know, panwalas, uh, for, uh, you know, uh, benches to come out and sit, to signages, to hawkers, you know, why is that? You know, then nine kilometer street won't be boring with single section. It won't be a concrete wall with, uh, you know, same kind of a thing going all along. We had examples. This is Manik Chok, you all know, morning cow grazing ground. Even today in 21st century, uh, afternoon busy district and evening outdoor eatery. So multiple use of space. And that is a great example of sustainability, frugality, uh, you know, plurality, no right of entry reserved. Everybody can go as well as the kind of uh, interactivity with the neighbor. Principles of sustainability, if we only take from yesterday's architecture around us, and that is even prevalent today, it's only to take principle. You don't have to copy the material elements or the kind of styles. 
But if you only take principle of insulating mass, it could be thick wall or it could be even today with a thin concrete wall, if you like, or aerated block, but a folded wall where, you know, that can become a cupboard and there from outside to in. And this is where I would like to make a point about this built uh, uh, bylaws, building bylaws. For example, Ahmedabad always till about 10 years ago had a, a relaxation in not being counted for FSI in balcony, which was four foot projection, you know, and that gave shadows uh, through the lower area. It was outside area. People could come out, terraces, people could sleep. Uh, and even in lashing rain, the building were a little more safer. Uh, now, two feet of projection architecturally allowed but it cannot come at a floor level, so you can't make balcony out of it. Even if you recede your, uh, you know, room by four feet and make it a six feet, it's not allowed. Why that two feet could not? It is not allowed as a storage. Uh, so if two feet of eluco bond is fine as a projection, but two feet is not a great overhang for the weather shade because nowadays we don't provide chajas, and uh, then the windows suffer, then the walls suffer, but. If that two feet was available as a cupboard, then your rooms would be larger. And that two feet of insulating mass through the storage, dead storage, would have even given you the less kind of impact of outside. But with insulation always goes ventilation, which is what you know, fixed glass doesn't give you. You can have I mean, insulated glass, but the heat generated inside, all of us emit 75 kilowatt uh, Every now and then, uh, it doesn't matter how cool we are, we produce heat. And that actually uh, needs to go out. Otherwise, you have to further kind of cool it to offset for that. So cross ventilation and upper level ventilation. We have enough sky components. So burning electricity daytime is a crime for illumination. We need to diffuse light. And we had these jali, which could work for privacy and culture. So Padmavati could see how Khilji looked like and didn't want to marry him. And Padma, I mean, Khilji died without just guessing what you know Padmavati looked like. So one-way communication and privacy. Venture effect from a small hole, the air would take velocity and you would pull breeze. It will reach farther with pressure. And Bernoulli principle, compressed and released, it would micro pool. And as a lure, thickness being the same as the puncture, 45 degree sun, and therefore most of the time it will give you illumination, but not direct sun. And we know contemporary times, Mr. Laurie Baker used it a lot. In traditional three-part window, ventilator on top, panchat mate, charvage lipstick karina kholwanu, and the lower one for the cool air to come in. And like Thali, you could permute and combine for your need of privacy at the time of the day, for the given moment and event, and for your own notion. Courtyard, another one, my next book soon, hopefully would be 500 page book on Courtyard Houses of India does the same. And it was also a point of harvesting rainwater, roof, even with sloping roof was a sleeping area, was a neighborhood chat area. You know, this is where it is a society. It is not even a neighborhood. It's a city that comes together. No boundaries, you know, ye tera ghar, ye mera ghar. And uh, even reproducible terraces, which Corbusier taught us from 1954 with Manorama Saravaj, or vertical uh, thing. So just to look at very high density in poor areas, higher than any neighborhood with high rise that you know in Ahmedabad, at least uh, 2.6 FSI, 60, uh, two third of it as a plot sellable, multiple use of space that is street, morning chores, afternoon kitty party, play area, evening socializing, watching the bird and festivities. And this whole principle of vertical froze projecting out so that when sun is overhead, entire facade is in the shade. When you have shared wall and the upper floor, 50% of your vagaries is already taken care of. Uh, courtyard, further micromanagement and likewise. And even the way of life, it is not just, uh, and that's what COVID taught us, uh, how much undue things we didn't need for how many uh, you know months altogether you know so uh, like this uh, julo swing what fan does with electricity is what is done by the swing uh, with muscle power 
and uh, you could just uh, remove the chain and the katha hoy tyara ko ek common jari jagya thai jaye when you jhulaoing on that you get it like a fan and uh, you can change the direction itle bahu a baju varta hoy to sasu ma am no isko ferbi de and if iska par navu kushan ke chadar na kri to diwali thai gayi so uh, like that so with that as a premise just two or three examples of uh, how do can we make a difference with design with this understanding this is a simple it is not even an architecture it's just a kind of product uh, design a small installation when in a slum they don't have a courtyard and yet have a deep long house last rooms are invariably pitch dark and even in a may afternoon it is very hot so they have to use fan which also gives you the hot air but they have to use the 60 watt bulb to illuminate even in may 2 o'clock so this is which was done for maila housing board of seva and uh, we simply addressed uh, you know we even had a empty water bottle and some exploration with that which worked but it would not give ventilation so then we moved to this what is called as ujasu where you have like dormer window with the same serration of your corrugated sheet and it's translucent so it gives daylight it evacuates the hot air and with daylight like this was what also we tried and it worked very well nobody gives you five pairs of a plastic bottle but that could glow and give you illumination in the room with natural daylight and these are the actual indicators these are daylight pictures without flash and uh, they could easy when I mean, there was a one year reading taken of the post occupancy performances each house minimum 250 rupee electricity bill saving monthly minimum of 15 rupee increase in a home based economic work there kids could now sit inside and do homework and their health index improved etc etc from that to mass housing you know this project but how qualitatively you make a difference density and quantity is exactly the same from what uh, left diagram that is the indoor development authority and right diagram that is vastu field foundation open space proportion is the percentage is the same number of houses the same human density is the same everything is the same and yet it is cheaper than the other and arguably closer to the ways of life so first this finger like network where vehicle and pedestrian separated and that which is diagonal green you can see is a shortcut no vehicle passes through and people can cut across entire it's like a small city you know 40000 people planned for in the first phase and over 20 years doubling up to 80000 so class 1 city is uh, 1 lakh so it's like a small town being put in there and therefore it is not the plot that you are worried about it's kind of plugging into the rest of the city so this becomes a shortcut then these uh, walking distance you know one or two minutes walking distance and you get convenient shop so you don't need to take a car like houston you have a kids play area in the caldicex and small plazas street itself doubles up for daily chores and such uh, activity those service lots turned up a uh, widening of the street can become a social ground daughter's wedding can be held and personal yards for all your extensions and needs uh, variations this is one thing you know and today it's becoming strangely more and more stricter you know that architecture ne na bola isliye aap color of the corridor wo bhi nahi badal sakte while you know who likes to wear the same dress uh, why you know even if uh, you know there was no uniform uh, did everybody wear the same in colleges no because that's your identity that's your personality and home is a visible symbol of family's identity as somebody said how do you bring that in mass housing one is you give catalog of alternatives so there are choices ke hamare yahan ye bhi hai row house bhi hai bungalow bhi hai ye bhi hai ye bhi but it has to be congruent and certain schemes have that like i showed you the yugoslavian it was a duplex row house that it was a walk up apartment and then it was a tall building and so on and so forth so like we had uh, these choices of who you could worship uh, pluralism that is another one is flexibility you know in all commercial projects we do that we never do partitioning we do frame structure and toilets which are constant which people shouldn't fiddle with and you could subdivide from 150 square foot uh, shop to whole floor of 15000 square feet uh, corporate house but in housing where it is most needed we don't do it 
why can't we think of that that even in a high and it is actually more simpler to do that because now if you go with a earthquake and all if you do a frame structure your wall is not participating in load sharing and therefore you could do it accordingly like i said about you know sari and third kit of elements you know why architecture ne bola hai ki aap yahan par color bhi change nahi kar sakte why all kind of balconies they doing mera wala pink or mera wala green would have become a fantastic kind of non boring uh, uh, thing so kit of elements can we not have like thali you can mix and match same ingredients given to all but mix and match so that is what was done here uh, this was just one officer and ke rang do sab gherwa and that ho gaya gherwa you know uh, but otherwise there was a color scheme given incrementally growing and from this lessons about kit of elements you can have same form work to do at least three out of these four options of staircases multiple projections multiple railings these are the least in a facade you can do and different types of uh, openings not even stylized and as i said we had actually designed a, a color scheme so that that's a trigger like it was done in uh, lic housing so that people could so with those permutation and combination 72 demonstration houses each was unique no two houses are same they might be similar and they are also meaningfully different in layout etc and over time when it has grown you can see people have exercised that option this street would have been terribly boring uh, on the right that is if people did not exercise uh, that and in fact 75 cm of extension zone was given open spaces and you can see cultural differences from tabela to shrine and different economic group can coexist you can see for the same infrastructure and neighborhood and inside you could be your uh, master with what you do and that's what gives the sense of belonging and the last one participatory project in post earthquake of course this is rural but these principles can well be applied in urban uh, you know uh, so this was uh, done uh, using the self uh, using the design with the people taking charge of choosing their neighbor location on the site etc with model shown the orientation with the peg uh, uh, given the understanding of the scale and then self help they building their own house so youngest learn from the older this traditional know how and uh, they kind of uh, also uh, take pride as well as sense of belonging and they would do as they want and their cultural ethos are manifested this being mud uh, housing it was 75 rupees square foot stronger than the other because we saw the results even in earthquake the new ones with virat kai compressor strength gave way but the other ones which we call kacha which stood we have records of 67 year old bhunga with every architect sign of having been visiting that house and so and their cultural ethos come and inside is also not a decor it is actually white clay with a mirror so the small aperture the light comes as a small aperture one in a diffused way or in a small proportion which can be magnified so inside is not gloomy and of course you can use today's know how so even if found strange like a joke this was a paradox but useful paradox to have a thatch roof and yet have a solar light inside or a smokeless chula and where the clay was dressed from the in situ building of those blocks actually dredge the ground and that with clay strata with tinge of rainfall create a uh, in a middle of desert after that is kala dungar and the border to pakistan with that even the ecology change the fact that there was water and therefore you got uh, uh, you know the vegetation and the kind of agriculture even in desert and you can see the faces culture even kind of now blooms because of the water and its presence uh, and this we had won the citation for habitat award and we were asked to revisit it after 10 years to understand whether the principles worked failed and what not and there's a huge report and uh, luckily they themselves built more pungas where we started they said we need sisoti house and an apartment tall apartment in concrete in place of bhunga that's how we start they had started and we ended with bhunga now have, they have homestay So if you do go for Sharad Utsav for Kushbu of Gujarat, they would house you there with thousand rupee as a home stay, you know, with uh, rotla shak and experience of staying in the bunga with a beautiful sunset and the desert life. So in short, any existence is about 
human to human balance or interactivity and human to nature for nourishing of uh, rejuvenating mind body and self and for harmony so i strongly believe that if we understand these fundamentals you are more creative than me and you can improve or empower through design and improve the quality of life design for improving the quality of life of people and to do that what we might have to do is to rather than giving gandhian currency the value let's make gandhian value itself the currency so we might have to reverse that whole bit glamour and beauty both catch attention but like fashion one fades away because it is applic it is temporal but beauty lasts forever because it's integral and it is timeless and to do that in india we have principles embedded or wisdom embedded from 6500 years not because it's grandma but for three performance reasons if we can learn from that the principles one because before electricity if they still manage the climate comfort what principles can we learn of architecture it was socio culturally most close to the people and their way of life so socio cultural appropriateness and third timeless aesthetic most of the tourism is to like even today's tourism policies for what the heritage that we inherit from yesterday years so can we create tomorrow which is aspired and inspired aspired for tomorrow but it's inspired from yesterday thank you for your patient listening and i would be happy to converse on any idea thank you thank you sir many thanks for addressing your ideas and volunteering your time i hope it was inspiring for others too you know like so uh, with this uh, now we'd like to open for the attendees for the live questions if anybody uh, and there was a question by yogesh joshi uh, i think how this this slab so thin is this a press pressed concrete slab i think it is for our uh, hiran sir to so guess if you can just admit yourself if you are uh, so that's a light uh, is you had seen that it's a steel column and uh, on the steel column we have the the steel pipe beams kind of thing and we have light uh, lightweight thin concrete slab on that and the bottom we are we have the kind of uh, to cover the pipe we have the kind of uh, i would say similar to cement kind of thing and uh, if you see the it, it will become thick in terms of looking because you have the roof uh, the small pipe and the uh, covering that pipe but if you are seen with the detail it affects the you know, at the edge we have chamfered the edge so at the edge it looks thinner but in uh, the, the after four feet it's, it's a thicker Hope it answered your question. Yeah. So there is another question dropped in by Akash Panjar. Uh, this is uh, diverted to Yatin sir. Uh, what can be the learnings from Nalanda Mahavira, Ma Mahavihara? That is Mahavidyalay is he mentioning? Takshila Nalanda type. Yeah, yeah, sir. I, I guess. Okay, if that's the case, basically you have to understand. Uh, it's not one building, one thing. But if you saw the plans, first of all, they use local material. They created human scale spaces. Of course, if it was for gathering, they relied on courtyards and all that. You know, because we understand from the history that there were some several lakhs of students uh, there, both. Uh, you know with the apit and the monks who used to study uh, and it was one of the largest library also and what not so uh, first they would have managed the climate it was actually under the rivalry of hinyan and mahayan it was burnt out otherwise it was a huge collection of books and library so they would have had managed the climate comfort by the mass the insulation the ventilation and yet get in a very quick illumination because there was no electricity then and you couldn't afford to keep burning the bulbs uh, sorry the oil lamps uh, so that is to be learned out of it so shared walls because if you see the whole plan 
they were shared was the courtyard kind of feature for collective activity. Why do you have to have social gathering on May afternoon, 2 o'clock? I also grew up in a school where always cultural programs were in the evening and sports days were in the winter. So why do you have to have a sports day in April and uh, afternoon? You know, and, you know, many schools, even uh, I'm sure Hiran Bhai would be facing the same, that each school is saying, we need an air-conditioned auditorium for 1,200 kids. But to, just to tell you, whole of Ahmedabad doesn't have a single auditorium with a capacity of 1,200 people as a municipal kind of a school. Uh, your uh, uh, Tagore Hall is 737. So what I was meaning was multiple use of space. Even terraces can be used in the evening for sleeping, daytime. Uh, or in the shadows, the angan could be. That's why orientation was important. You know, local know-how and spanning with the stone or whatever local material. Then, and uh, this so use of local material, correct, moderate scale, so that you don't need high technology to span that. Multiple use of space, courtyard as a feature, and protected fenestrations uh, and uh, thick insulation with necessary ventilation. Uh, hope it answered your question. You can unmute yourself if not. We can take one more question from live and then we can uh, move for uh, Google Form questions. Like, uh, this is all uh, the second one to both. How will this pandemic change your design philosophy in the coming year? If it doesn't change, then why? Again. If I say for myself, it uh, strengthens this. A lot of these you don't have to speculate. Like Hiran Bhai was also saying, living with nature. And I mean, there's no argument on that. Now, whichever form you bring in nature, nature can be view out of a window. Nature can be kind of a vegetation which keeps changing because it's not boring. And not only vegetation, but because of the flower, you know, we do seasonal blooming of uh, plantation. Like uh, Hiran Bhai said that fast growing and slow growing. Same way we say that seasonal blooming in terms of fruiting and flowering. Uh, fruiting is important even though monkey comes, but for, because of that monkey comes, you know, and only if you have, I, I, I just learned uh, in America, they have a huge business of bee breeding, uh, which they rent, it is not selling honeybee, but they rent the bees so that if you have, a, if you are a farmer and if you have a farm, uh, if you have bees, uh, they would kind of polyminate, you know, the area. Otherwise, if there was no such insect, uh, like present uh, statistics say that in uh, last uh, few de four decades or so, we have lost some more than half uh, biodiversity. So they actually rent it so that it fructifies and whatnot. Uh, there are certain uh, flowers only where a butterfly would come. There are certain ones where uh, certain other insects would come and that keep changing breeze uh, so plastic plant gets boring after a point but uh, you know view out of a window of a tree it doesn't uh, bore you thanks to the sun that it grows differently every day and morning to sun it is different and then multiple use of space so it strengthened our idea even more that two bedrooms you extra you never needed uh, so frugality sustainability even within the home, uh, even if you had AC, we like to come out to a veranda or a balcony. So we appreciated the value of outdoor spaces, even within that limited uh, periphery or so. Uh, so I think it even strengthens the thing. And we learned the uh, you know idea of neighborhood. You know, if nobody used that collective kitchen, but thanks to COVID, if everybody relied or kind of saw the value in a collective. Uh, element of that sort. So I think it strengthens some of those ideas rather than uh, denies. So I think now it's easier not to be having to convince client of any more things. I think it is self-evident. Of course, we forget very fast. But I think this is thankfully, even that basic myth it has broken, that I'm very happy about. That we always felt the population bahut ho gaya, yeah, a planet par kaise abhi hum, uh, kar sakte hai same number of people and yet it showed the way that what was undue we knew the difference between essential and excessive 
so even our norms we should change we should positively change okay why not have even in a high rise 10% of your floor area as compulsory terrace free of fsi you know we should change our norm that beyond this room it is not allowed ambani or no ambani so this uh, side margin i told you about this stupid rule of 2 feet architectural projection uh, same way side margin in ahmedabad's climate i showed you with that uh, diagram of perimeter block and what not 50% of the area on an average 500 square foot uh, meter plot goes in uh, uh, side margin which is good for nothing and it increases exposure to outside but in a pro pro house or a poor house we had creativity you know ahmedabad we were ingenious our developers were ingenious that they developed uh, row houses uh, as a kind of combination of a bungalow with a front and backyard and a uh, poor house with its own shared walls and vertically stacked unit uh, and they got commercially high density that time compared to four story walk up it was more sought after that's why jai shefali i don't know Uh, was one of the most popular for middle income and shamal one two three four five I don't know how many it became etc. Hmm? Hiran Bhai might say other things. Hiran sir, thank you. Yeah, uh, for for me that uh, the best teaching was how to slow down your life. Mm -hmm. I think uh, I really realized that uh, what you need you you hardly you hardly need uh, things for your own happiness in a way. so we were actually in a, such a madras that you no know, every weekend you want to go to some restaurant or some cafe and to see the art gallery and it was absolutely like a madness uh, of a life and uh, the pandemic has really taught us to be you can still enjoy the same thing and uh, slow down slowing down your life is very important uh, at certain aspect uh, Uh, and uh, you you need to learn a balancing your life so that was a great learning i would say that uh, it's not your academics or not your own profession but there are many things that your hobby or maybe your fitness or sports i mean they are all important and that has uh, been uh, i i i got the, uh, the kind of learning that doesn't matter no you slow down but uh, do whatever you do something very right and meaningful Hope it answered your question, Aisha. Aisha Mehta. Uh, let's take two, three questions from uh, well, uh, well, form, and then let's come back to the live one. So there is a question from Juhi Chandra, which is directed to Hiran sir. So, does your personal design philosophy varies in the in to current pandemic situation also as a nature's profound influence how architecture plays an important role to achieve it yeah i i think if i just say that uh, you know, i mean uh, connecting to your work with the nature has come very late in my life you no know? i mean I, i graduated from the seth university and uh, very obsessed with the architecture and architecture form and uh, i say i so i mean what happened that earlier you used to do the architecture and always you used to think that interior to was side ka job hai no like you would not look at the work of interior designing as a, a main uh, main uh, your um, profession and no that's how it was the time when we started because there were hardly any interior designing school that time so it was a jisko kaam nahi milta wo interior karta that kind of thing was there but for me i, I found that was wonderful because uh, it taught me how to go in the detailing because interior interior designing will Take you till the uh, latest uh, threads into cushion covers. So you go in minute detailing and kind of color combination. You know how, how many buttons you want in your cushion cover and things like that. So it was uh, in terms of uh, learning, in terms of design process, this was wonderful. But I say the the real wisdom came after 15 years of my practice, where I actually start inclined to the landscape design. Uh, as I said, I'm not. Uh, uh, I have not. Uh, uh, Learn any uh, landscaping from anybody else. So wherever I get a chance, I try to find my mentor and go. And that's so that's where where it is. So I I I in week, uh, weekend I used to go in one farm. Uh, people who are doing organic farming, and I I had requested them to give me a small order for me to explore uh, about planting. So I would go on a weekend 
and try to explore with my own idea of planting and see how the things happen. So, uh, it, um, I started with this, I could not manage with the loss of uh, work pressure, but that is how wherever I get uh, uh, learning and uh, from other people, I try to learn about landscaping. Yes, landscaping is very important and I very strongly suggest people if you are not even you are not a landscape architect, just try to design while you are designing like the interior designing or architecture. Try to incorporate the nature into your design. Doesn't matter if you don't know the names of the plants, but you can say that I want a five feet cut tree or I want tall tree or I just want flower tree, no? So then you can take the help of the let's say, landscape designers or maybe a uh, people who are doing gardening for your projects or something like that. So, but cultivate a habit to bring uh, uh, nature while you design your architecture. Uh, so, hope it answered your question, Joey. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. Sir. So there was a, a next question by Abhishek Verma, uh, which is directed to Yatin sir. How can we meet the housing demand in India, especially rural India, in a sustainable and economical way? Is there a way to make our villages self-sufficient or is it just an utopian thought? Uh, Self-sufficient in the sense of a thriving village, what can we as architects do to improve the situation of rural India? Actually, I would say villages are more self-sufficient than urban areas. Uh, of course, like urban area depend on food on village versus uh, we depend or the village would depend on some other infrastructure facilities. So uh, more than infrastructure of some product. So that's not not interdependence, but uh, primarily they have been living with nature. They've been living with fellow people and they've been kind of uh, producing things so i personally would think that issue is less of uh, but three ways you can meet the challenge of housing one let people do what they do like uh, for the shortage of time i didn't put one approach of uh, upgrading in situ upgrading you know like even a slum we call slum because they don't meet the infrastructure standard or land is not occupied uh, legally by them but if you see the statistics of even mumbai Mumbai, as many million people, half of the city lives in a slum. But ironically, that 50% of population is only occupying 8% of Mumbai's land. So 8% can accommodate half of the city. And we are cribbing 92% uh, open space. Uh, we are cribbing about. So if you give them the patta, you say this is now your own land. And then that with that tenure of right, people would invest. Nobody has invented houses for them, even if it's a jhompra. They might have pledged wife's jewelry to borrow money and then build even a shack. So house they can manage on their own. But uh, if you were to split resources, give them the land and infrastructure and let them build their own homes. So that is one way. Even if you do high rise, then why do you have to build a full house? Just give them the slabs three-dimensional grid like site and services and let people kind of uh, build as and when and subdivide and whatnot you know so one is let that parallel system you know even not only housing or architecture but India thrives on parallel system which is informal system if hawkers were not there how would many things be affordable to as many you know so it, it works even our garbage collection works on informal system formal system is incapable of handling all that so even recycling uh, industry to whatever so one let people everywhere you don't need architect uh, you know or the type of architect that we tend to label you know there could be barefoot architects or local like in a medical profession there are dyes and all uh, rural uh, you know deliveries they are capable of they can't uh, i mean create a shop and say, okay, I'm super expert for all complicated cases. And that is how the, always the scales have worked. You know, the village, five villages go around a mandi of a small town. Small town depend on a mandi of a big town. 
and big town depends on the city and city depends on the mega city and mega city would depend on the next uh, right now sanand from a sleepy dormitory something has suddenly become a big city you know so that's the jump that is creating a problem otherwise if each node all we have to do is just reinforce it with the right infrastructure and i've often given even for urban area forget the rural uh, this example and i've actually calculated from of course the uh, normal general knowledge distances if you take netherland as a country a stretch from amsterdam to rotterdam by a train public transport takes about 45 minutes on an average yeah. okay but you cross through nothing less than five very big city of course there are smaller towns but big with totally different character totally different revenue base and totally different history and identity and even geography for example amsterdam tourism and uh, uh, kind of canal city etc etc large one then uh, you have uh, i forget the name of the other one uh, which has those uh, historic uh, kind of uh, castles and whatnot then you come to den haag uh, and it's a capital diplomatic things uh, etc and it has a port then uh, you come to uh, delft which is a like a university town and its own history and that blue pottery kind of idea and then you go to rotterdam which was bombarded in world war and then it's a largely new created city with institutions with kind of offices and whatnot each has its own different governance different kind of so in other words within city like i used to go to delft and uh, there was never a cab uh, or a bus you could walk in 15 minutes one point to the other and yet in eight minutes with public transport you could come to next city you know so likewise each city having its own basic needs like school right kind of health center for that scale all doesn't have to a multi speciality uh, hospital and uh, their own kind of water and uh, electricity and related needs villages are first to become self sufficient sorry it must have answered uh, there is another uh, question uh, dropped in by nishta devnani ke uh, I think we can have uh, opinions from both of you on this question. Can we have this as the last questions? I, because I, I have to. I have yeah, to yeah, sir. I see so close. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah, sir. We can take it there as a last question. Yeah. And I can see the people are dropping also a lot. So, I think it's enough, for, enough for learning for everybody for this weekend. Yes, sir. We can guess. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, what what are the aspe aspects to keep in mind for designing incremental mass housing sorry what are the aspects to keep in mind for designing incremental mass housing uh yeah uh, the, the uh, designing a uh, private house versus mass housing is a uh, one basic fundamental uh, difference is that you talk to the client directly when you design somebody's house when you do the mass housing you have to you let's say if it's a real estate project or, or it's a government project you talk to the authority but you don't actually meet to the real uh, real users of the house so your design has to be uh, in a way that is it, it should have lots of flexibility adaptability by anybody can use it i mean i'm uh, there were wonderful examples uh yatin by so in his uh, presentation that you you kind of leave kind of little uh, uh, space for them to also alter and uh, adjust according to their living style and their need. So basically mass housing, uh, the basic fundamental thing is that you have to design in such a way that it can be used by anybody. And uh, I mean, it's the same kind of space you are creating for the multiple number of people. So it's, it's like uh, your housing becomes more, almost like a product design. So we always say that if you do a small little improvement, it's multiplied by hundreds and thousands because you might be in a mass housing, it is 100 houses or maybe 200 or 500 houses. Let's say if you improve a one window in terms of one room by cross ventilation, it will become 200. It will apply to 200 families and they will stay next 20 years so for that. So it's a generation and you are, uh, no. So it is that sensitive. 
so that's where uh, in a in single house yes you can do the mistakes and it uh, it will uh, it goes to only one family but in mass housing it multiplies so you have to be very very careful about whatever you design just two more dimensions to what he already explained uh, flexibility that comes from structural kind of uh, lateral division or combination flexibility and which is nowadays very easy with the frame structure but another one that can also go with it uh, which uh, indirectly happens in a frame structure is a modular coordination so for example if i have 3.6 and next to that for 90 multiple of 90 just as an example i'm saying 90 can be services your uh, toilet or can be staircase 180 double of that becomes a small study room can be puja 270 becomes a kitchen or something 360 becomes a living room and now 450 can be kitchen and dining living and dining or something like that and so on and so forth so dimensional coordination if you have you might be able to juggle for example right now we have one big room but later on if daughter and son both grows and you want separate room you could partition it without it not being functional and so so that kind of uh, understanding of the design and uh, third one a little open space even on the upper floor and right now one of the examples uh, we can look towards is uh, lic housing uh, that it was not a four feet balcony but a terrace like space everybody got and uh, over 40 uh, 30 odd years or so it has been able to adapt it's a street every house is a major drawing case study with color being different with uh, railing being different with extensions being made and so and so forth so and uh, a small details also because growth doesn't mean that one house become you know the uh, rabbit becomes an elephant that's not a growth growth is uh, like my belly versus hiren bhai's belly that i was as thin but uh, i could should be able to accommodate so stretchability to some extent uh, and uh, even in bombay even in a uh, government housing what have they done they have come up with bombay grill as we call it you know the grill window ko thoda bar hata diya aur usme panch cheeze very diverse hoti hai ek to ghar ki cycle bhi bar rakh dete ho bachcho ki tricycle fir ac to rehta hi rehta hai some people put planters and otherwise all the storage and sometimes you can sit there and watch things happening around so even such small elements can become an extended thing uh, beyond your given perimeter thank you sir, thank you, sir. Uh, just one more question sir that is incremental uh, housing uh, necessary like uh, for internal changes or it it is uh, both, both, both. see uh, housing is a verb and not a noun which means that even if it was tailor made as i said that i used to be so thin and my stitched shirt for me with my you know vital measurements would not work for me now and now if i stay home and my wife is strict with diet i might again become here and by and again that would have to be restitched you know so in a <laughs> you <laughs> i can't grow hair that i don't know but i'm hoping to be in other sense the same uh, yes. but uh, you know you have a cycle which keeps changing in everybody and for us it's a generation long position you know so you are uh, you know young you have now become the head of the family your parents may be single parent now uh, then uh, your kids were able to sleep in one room in even your room and extended bed but now they both need a separate space and now your son wants to stay with you usually nowadays they don't but uh, you have to have another room for that so you sleep in the kitchen in Mumbai that happens uh, worth of housing but I know uh, the uh, you know when I knew them they were like uh, young age teenagers and they used to be in a drawing room or a kitchen then their parents were having the master bedroom now they have a master bedroom and the parents have gone into another one so it is both undeniably both and house is not outside and inside as uh, Iren Bhai said that even a tree or even your entry even your neighbor is your house why do you want to go with the plot go paper the government kill you but if I can see far off, that much is my plot. If I have a neighbor's, uh, you know, 
आई मीन हमारे बाजू वाले ने नींबू उगाया है और हमारे सब वर्कर वहां से नींबू लेते हैं यू नो सो व्हाट एवर इज व्हाट यू कैन एंजॉय इज योर्स यस सर थैंक यू सो मच फॉर आंसरिंग द क्वेश्चन Okay, so with this, I would like to uh, uh, wrap up this session. Like, uh, I would like to extend my thanks to everyone present here, and especially our speakers, and uh, also uh, Architect Vasav sir, sir, for uh, Vasav sir for uh, helping in in this initiative throughout the sessions. And uh, thank you, everyone. We hope you will be able to join us again. Await another drop of a message for the stream. Stay tuned. Thank This you. Is Thank you. Keep safe Thank and stay you. positive. Thank you, sir. Have a wonderful weekend. Bye. Shalom, Ivan. Thank you, 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 Ivan. Thank